Well, it's finished. Millwall won Leicester now. Uh, I'm joined with Sam here. We'll get Sam's views very, very shortly. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you want to have your say on what you've just watched in that game. Typical Leicester, it is a roller coaster this season, Sam. But where do you want to start with that, Sam? What's your views on I mean, the, the, it starts with Enzo and it ends with Enzo. The football and the creativity and the urgency and the style of play comes through him as a manager. When we were playing up until the 60th minute, nil-nil, we were passing it around the back and doing the exact same thing. When we were one nil down, all the way up until the 97th minute, we were doing the exact same thing. We brought Dakar on for the last nine well, minutes of the game. Enzo, Enzo, for me, this is what I want to know you guys think. Enzo, for me, finally, when we were one nil down, finally changed in the 88th minute when he took Winks off and put Dakar on and therefore we sort of were playing more attacking. And, and the last seven or eight, nine minutes, we actually looked like we were going to score. We created all the chances in the last seven minutes. So why did Enzo wait till the 88th minute? Because I, I don't think he's an amazing manager. I think he was a good coach at Man City. Um, but he's never really been in a team that's been losing games. You know, Man City win week in, week out. Does, does Enzo realise that he, he can affect the game during... During the game by his tactics. That's that's what I want to know. Um, I think it's really, really interesting. Keith says it was an abysmal performance. Um, get your views in on that. It was perhaps the worst performance of the season in a way. Fair play to Millwall. They're a rubbish team with pretty rubbish players in a pretty rubbish league right down near the bottom. But they got stuck in today. And, um, you know, John says toothless and pathetic. It, yeah, let's not get too carried away, but it was like we needed to go and have a performance day. It's one thing to lose, Sam, but it was just, it was Enzo Ball. The worst things of Enzo Ball, wasn't it? Just, I, I don't, I'm at a loss for words as to how well, we can play that. Stubborn, who does that remind you of? Says S. Blackie on, on X. It, it is very Rogers esque. It's Rogers esque, but it's like this. It is just Rogers esque in there um like monk says they've got this i'm not gonna have a go so much at the players i'm more annoyed but just because they're taught sam to play this enzo ball they must but be you told you can't always play enzo ball when you're losing we were losing at bristol city they must we were get losing it's no war they must get told off after the game to doing long balls because we against norwich and against birmingham we were doing more direct football and you know more getting into the box Today, every minute, even when we were losing from the minute we kicked off again from their goal to the last minute, passing it around the back, no direction. It's just, it's not rocket science. When it, you need to get a goal, you change it up and you put people forward. Again, Millwall, the whole time, they, they wouldn't attack us. They were just counter-attackers. They put all 11 men in their own half, let us play. I said to you, we were struggling to pass it between Fies and Vestergaard, and Millwall players weren't even attacking us. They were just letting us do the thing, and we couldn't even pass it next to each other. It made no sense. We were, Fies was there, Vestergaard was there, and we were struggling to pass it left to right, and Millwall were just letting us do it, and we couldn't even pass it left to right. I don't understand why people think, or why Enzo thinks, I'd say, I mean, this tactic should work, because it doesn't, especially when you're losing. It, it's... I, I, it did. I, I mean, Boo Records says there, it took us 90 minutes to start playing. It took Enzo to make a tactical change because everything else up until then for me was like for like. Akun comes off, Fatua comes on, and Diddy comes off, Pratt comes off, Vardy comes off, Nacho comes off. They're all, for me, like for like, very similar players, going to play a very similar role and told to play the same sort of position. That's the thing. It, uh, and Nacho's slightly different to Vardy, but he's still going to be told to play in the same thing. Hacken took off. Butter was going to be told to play the same way. It took till the 88th minute for something different to happen. I'm going to add Lox in, who's clicked in. Lox, can you hear us okay? Yes, mate. Can you hear me? Yeah, Lox, I, you can hear from me and Sam. We're frustrated. But I, 88th minute, Enzo actually changed his tactics, correct? Yeah, the main the the main thing you mentioned there was eighty eight minutes. I think, mate. <laughs> yes, we we I mean they scored on what was it the fifty 
60th minute. Yeah, something there's like half an hour left of the game to go, and it's just the same passing around football for another half an hour. He finally changed it, Locks, in the 88th minute, and it actually had an effect. He actually did something that had an effect. But why yeah, did mate. it then? Why that well, way? There was an effect because obviously we then, from that moment on, it did seem, yeah, you know, that there was a more of an in attack, attacking intent. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what it is, mate, because, you know, he makes these comments, doesn't he, uh, Enzo, that he says, you know, this is the way we play and this is it. Yeah. You know? But then he goes and makes a, a change like that on the 88th minute. So then in, in that, by doing that, he's kind of going back on what he said previously, which we're happy for him to go back on that because we want to see a change like that. But again, it's it's just far too late. I'm interested to see what he does say after the game. And, and mate, no no doubt that fans now will blame Ian Acho and Dakar um, because of Nacho's header that was cleared off the line and then Dakar's header at the end, which was, you know, awful. I'm not having that. And Nacho's, Nacho's header was just a great clearance off the line. He, he could... Sure, we could have put it somewhere different, but that player's running across. Yeah, yeah. You know, Dakar's 50p header. Well, what do you expect from Dakar? But at least in that last nine minutes, yeah, where he did change tactics, we actually had half a chance of getting a goal to get a draw away at fourth bottom Millwall. we you know, well. I know I agree, mate. I'm so, you know, I'm not, I'm not blaming Nacho or Dakar. I'm just saying people will now. People will use it as an excuse and. There, there have been people for a while now saying, like, you know, it's not Ender's fault, it's the players for not taking the chances. But, you know, it's down to the manager and the way he sets up the team, um, you know, that, that allows, the well, that, that affects the quality of chances that you create. And today, I said it in the chat, mate, today I think was the worst attacking performance that we've had all year, all season. There was just nothing going for us. We had, towards the end of the game, we had that moment with Ricardo where he, he got a shot on target, you know, you'd like him to score it. But again, you know, he's a right back. He is a right back. We need to remember he's a right back. And, um, you know, the other chances, obviously Nacho, you know, great clearance off the line. Daka, 50p header, we've seen it all season, you know. But the, the 90 minutes of the game before that, that is what, that's where you need to score your goals. And we didn't do it. So... I mean, Sam Gorko says there, and I, listen, I've had to put up with Sam screaming at, at the TV for the last 90 minutes, but Dorco says they're the only possession-based team who give the ball away. Yeah, it was just a bad game, but we've seen it way too often. I've said, I think I said before they scored that teams that come and sit for all 11 men behind the ball, right QPR, well, let, let us do our thing because they know we're just going to pass it around the back. And that's what we did for half the game. If you look at the, watch the match back, half the game is in our own half when they're not even putting pressure on us, and we're just sat there passing it comfortably, and then we go one nil down, and we're doing the exact same thing. There is no urgency in that team, and we've seen that way too often this season. And it's stuff like that that's going to cost us. So I'm looking right now. Leeds are still drawing to Sunderland at home. So it's yeah, just... I've got, I've I've got the Leeds game on. I, I think it's going to finish nil nil. It's it's added time has it's gone over the ninety three, so it should be finished in a sec. Um, but that's that's the only you know this is the thing, mate. Like you look at the work we did in terms of beating Birmingham and Ipswich and Leeds both losing. At that moment, you're in such a good position, and then we have thrown it away because although Leeds have drawn, Ipswich <coughs> will probably go and win tomorrow night, and then you're you're then fighting then with Leeds. You know what I mean? So you know the one thing I wanted, mate, was to have no part of the final day. I wanted to be up, and that would have happened if we won the five games, okay, so with the last game being the sixth. If we won those five, we, we'd we be up by the last day. Because, we, mate, I don't trust this team to have to win on the last day of the season to finish top two. I don't trust the team. I mean, well, so, I, I mean Locks and Sam, well, let's start with you, Sam. What, I, what I'd love to see from Leicester sometimes is what Millwall did today, which was actually look like they, they needed, they had to win yep. today, Millwall. It was as if it was as if it was all resting on it, which it is for Millwall and it is for Leicester. Sam. Why can't we? I don't. See, I saw it for the last five minutes today and a bit against Birmingham at the end. It just shows you what a team with a good manager can do. I mean, I know Millwall haven't been doing great this season, but it just shows you that all it takes is a simple tactic. You know, a simple watch how Leicester play in every game and this is how we'll counter them. And it works. It wasn't fancy. It wasn't pretty by them. 
and you know it doesn't work against most teams but if you look at our stats against the probably the bottom eight teams in this league we've done rubbish against them because all they do is come and sit and defend even though they're at home they sat and defended and it works for them it's not hard to figure out how to play against this Leicester team you see how we play week in week out we're not going to change it's just how we play football and honestly any team that wants to come and beat Leicester, just put all 11 men behind the ball and counter-attackers. It's that simple. I mean, yeah. ben, ben says here, Locks, the typical Leeds have drawn nil-nil at another wasted opportunity for us to kick on. That that game's finished, has it, Locks? It's just finished, mate, yeah. Yeah, it's just finished, uh, nil-nil. Um, yeah, th that's a good point. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, imagine we did win. You know, imagine we did win and we'd then be, um, what, four points clear, five points, four points clear of, of Leeds with a game in hand still. You know, that is yeah, I mean, uh, it, it feels woeful to think we're grumbling tonight and feel really cross about it because we are still stop at the championship. Um, by for, one for 24 point, hours, we've got a game in hand over Leeds, we've got a game in hand, we're, we're on the same games as Ipswich and we're a point ahead, so it's still very, very much in our hands. But it, it is just frustrating, locks. Well, I, I said last week, mate, that I only thought we would get top two if we won nine out of nine points, um, Birmingham, Millwall and Plymouth, because coming up, mate, we have two of the toughest games in our season in, in Southampton, and people will laugh, but Southampton are, uh, is going to be a tough game. And West Brom, mate, by the way, West Brom is going to be a very, very tough game. Well, both are going for playoffs, aren't they? So. Yeah, and and I think, mate, because um, you've got to remember, Southampton still aren't mathematically out of the top two race, which is mad. But West Brom's going to be a really hard game, mate. And I think, you know, if ever you want to kind of bank a loss, if you get what I mean, kind of bank a game where you can, uh, you know, kind of afford to lose, it, it would be one of them two. And the fact we've lost to Millwall, mate, we have to win every... I know we've said it, you know already but we have to win every game because now that we've lost that one all it takes is one match where we lose another one or, or we draw and Leeds and Southampton uh, Leeds and, and Ipswich win and it's flipped it is flipped we're in third place and then we suddenly you have to go and beat Southampton in order you know your game in hand in order to to get back in the top two so we've put ourselves in a really, really, really horrible situation losing tonight, mate. Really bad. Um, and again, I'll say it again. If we'd have won tonight, we'd be... Someone will have to actually confirm four or five points clear of Leeds with a game in hand still. And at if that point... Won, if we'd have won tonight, we would have been four points ahead of Leeds with one game in hand over Leeds. Yeah. And it, at that point, things look really good for us. But right now, yeah. just off the back of a loss, things look a bit shaky again. Yeah, I mean... Andy says here, guts and determination won Millwall the game, Sam. I think we've touched on that, haven't we? Yeah. Fair play to them. Yeah, they stuck out. They had a tactic. Uh, they had a game style. They had a game management. I'm sure they don't play like that every week. They just knew the best way to counter Leicester. And it worked. It's frustrating, but it is getting very boring and tedious to, you know, repeat the same words week in, week out. Even when we win, it's you saying the same things. Of it's slow football. And honestly, when we go to the Premier League, if if we go to the Premier League and we have Enzo, I think he'll be one of the first managers to get sacked because it's just not going to work against these high caliber teams. And I can't again, locks. There was there was some talk like uh, I, I mean, luckily nobody's mentioned it tonight, but saying all oh, the Leicester players are tired. There's a lot of games and all this and that, but the games should be easier when you're winning them, like we have done against Birmingham and Norwich. The, the games are tougher when you're Millwall and you've got to scrap for a point. So. Let's not say Leicester players were tired tonight or anything like that. That's nonsense. I think it it, it affects the team in the later stages of the game, like it did, you know, as it did. Yeah, but but like both the, teams have played the same games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm agreeing. Um, I I did think we looked a little bit leggy. I did because I said it in the chat, and I know you disagree, but I thought we looked a bit leggy. However, I'm not I'm not blaming that one bit on on the on you know i'm not blaming the result on that at all um and i'm not blaming the referee as some people are doing i'm not blaming you know dakar or Ian actually i'm blaming the manager mate the manager can we just i don't know if you've spoken about it yet mate you know i said it so many times in the group chat you saw it dewsbury hall and dakar uh, and indeedy they'd swap sides for some reason and i personally think one of the best parts of our game is the link up between 
uh, Dewsbury Hall and, and Mavadidi. You know, I think I've seen it before where they've kind of been on set different sides, but I've not seen it for a few months. I, I just wonder why he went for that. Um, you know, it, it did baffle me a little bit and it, and it carried on until indeed he went off. So, yeah, that did annoy me a little bit because I just think the 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 play, the link up play that uh, Dewsbury Hall and Mavadidi do have is very good. Uh, and it's a shame we didn't get to see any of that tonight because of Enzo. I mean, Sam, I think I think Jamie Vardy, they were saying by half time and had five touches, literally five <laughs> touches in the yeah. first half. That, I mean, that's just the stat. You've got our greatest of all time striker, who's a Premier League golden boot winner, scored plenty of goals this season in the championship. He's had five touches. It's just the way we play football. Again, there's no point uh... in having a striker. We're just going to do that. Vardy's notoriously known for breaking away off players' shoulders and getting in a one-on-one with the keeper. And we just don't offer any of that service. It, it's not hard, and it's not even a tactic to just say, "Listen, lads, every now and again, rob it up for to Vardy to run onto it." And we just don't do that. And I don't understand why we have to play this tippy tappy football when it doesn't really work for us. When you know, especially when we're losing, it, it's just we're not Man City. We can't come back against these teams when we're losing. I mean, locks react to Tito Blue. I, I've already said Nacho's header for me was a decent enough header. It was a clear, op- sort of open goal, but their defender just runs straight in front and clears the ball. You have to say amazing defence. But oh, yeah, I'm, his, I'm, his header wasn't quite straightforward. He, he's, he's not a header of the ball, but for me, Enzo, what I want to say to Tito Blue is, why it's Enzo is because Enzo took till the 88th minute to make a managerial decision that affected yeah. the game. And it was far too late. That's why yeah. it's Enzo's fault. It's his job to make the decisions lots. Yeah, Tito, Blue and I get on well. We, we go back and forth on my show quite often. Um, so this is no kind of not personal to him, but I'm not having that comment whatsoever. I think the Nacho header with Daka header was the 95th. What about the whole, what about the other 90 minutes before that? You know, we didn't create mm-hmm. chances and that's down to the manager to put the team in a position where you can create chances. So, uh, Tito Blue, I'm not having that, mate. We can't put any blame on them two players. We had 90 full minutes before that, including Jamie Vardy on the pitch. Um, we don't, we don't, you know, the way we play, it just doesn't suit Vardy. We know that. He's managed to score a lot of goals this season, which is fair dues. Most of the goals have come off the bench, I, I believe, because um, that's because he's an impact player. He, he comes clutch. But starting a game against a team like that who sit back, we're not playing counter-attack and football. It, he does struggle to get chances. He struggles to get touches. And so I'm not putting any blame on any of the strikers. It's down to the manager. Mm. No, I would say that today. I think Enzo has to carry the camper today. Uh, Sam Mark says here, we, we just need to get more crosses into the box. We actually probably put quite a few crosses into the box. It's just but not... they're just, it's like pass, pass, pass for 10 minutes and then one cross in the box where there's nobody there. I don't yeah. mind crossing into the box. Like right, you said, we're so slow. That I've said that, I said it today again. We're passing it between Fai's Vestergaard to Justin, to left to right, to back, to left to right, all just to pass it to Winks in the midfield anyway, when that pass was available 20 passes ago anyway. It, the same with the crossing. We'll do 30 passes before we cross this. You could have crossed it 30 passes ago, and we're still trying to cross it into players that don't screw like with Daka, again, notorious for running off players. Vardy, very notorious. The only player you'd argue that's, you know, should be in that team for the crosses would probably be Cannon, and he's nowhere near the team because mm. mm. he's the only tall one we have. Ianacho's good at holding the ball, but he doesn't really get a look in anymore. So we played back the wrong tactics for the wrong players, and we still continue to do it. And that's why you see things like Vardy not scoring. While we're having a good old moan, and nobody likes a good old moan perhaps more than me, there is one person, it's Patrick. Thanks, Patrick. I, I moaned the same. Locks. I can't remember seeing a score from a corner particularly many times this season. I'm trying to, off the top of my head, can't remember one. Tonight, again, the cor- the corners, as Patrick says, are just woeful. They're awful. I, I'm trying to not be picky on things, but did you think the corners, did you spot that? Yeah, mate. I mean, it's been like this for, what, two years? Two, three years? Court set pieces, yeah. two years? Um, it's, you know, it, and we had, the, dating back to when we had that whole kind of... Um, situation with you know Rogers bringing in a set piece coach and all of that crap um it's clearly not worked on a lot of the club I mean Vestergaard I know that we've said a lot you know he's very bad in the air for somebody who is what six foot six six foot four six foot five um so 
yeah, I, we've scored a couple, mate, this season, but we don't we don't make use of them enough. You know, I think we used to say last season in the Premier League, if you remember, that if the opposition get a corner, they may as well have a penalty. Um, and you know, now I think when we get a corner, we may as well have a goal kick, mate. You know, we don't we don't do anything with them. So, um, you know, just throwing a big man in there isn't really good enough. You have you have yeah. set piece coaches for a reason to to work on. Um, you know, different things. Well, so we yeah. saw Norwich draw a set piece player at the King Power just last Monday when they yeah, yeah. In, they tried something different. Uh, one of our corners in the second half today when we're one 0 down. We, we mess around with it and he ends up back at Hermanson in goal. I'm like, how have we yeah. gone from a corner, passed it around and ended up back at the keeper? It's like, it couldn't be more. And that happens with three kicks package. as well, that it ends up back with Hermanson. Um, you know, so, yeah, <laughs> I agree. With, yeah, some people will take the take the mick out of us for saying all Brighton, but, you know, he's, I mean, just think back to that. Was it the Stoke game where we won 5-0 where all Brighton came on and great cross into Vardy who was running through and scored, you know, if if later on in the game you then rely on on crosses into the box, then you need your best crosser on the pitch and obviously that's all Brighton. Was all Brighton on the bench today? I think he was. Um, so why didn't he come on, you know? I know he's not always on the bench, but if he was, why did he come on? Why didn't he come on? Um, you know, I know Atkins started today, and I think he deserved it just off the back of, um, just off the back of, you know, because for me, mate, in the times where he's come off the bench this season, he's actually done okay. I think he brings a, a different kind of energy to the team, but that is later in the game. You know, it's, well, different. it's different when you I, start I, a game. I, mean, I, I hear what you're saying, lots. I just think Fatua's first half against Norwich and Fatua's first half against Birmingham had far more impact, and I would say. That was last twenty minutes, thirty minutes today he had far more impact yeah. than that. Guy. But, 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 but yeah. if 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 Enzo dropped him for a reason, for for because he was tired or whatever, then he's got to bring someone in. And I'm saying Atgun. I'm not being tired for a twenty-one year old player on ten, twenty, thirty grand a week. I, I'm tired, locks. I started work at seven a.m. You're probably tired. We're all, everybody watching this probably works and does runs around with kids, all sorts. That's being tired. Not playing a game of football. Um, Ron say, Ray says here, Fatua should have started here. I've had quite a few comments. I just want to talk about Mavadidi, Sam. Quite a few people say Mavadidi seemed off the boil today. Uh, I do have a little bone to pick with Mavadidi. He was one of the players after the Birmingham win that he said, everyone's against us and we just want to shut them up. Uh, and then he, he does a performance like that and he doesn't do anything. He does two predictable things. I think as soon as one thing doesn't work, he stops it or he knows he, he just gives up. He's had a couple of good end games, uh, scoring the late goals and getting us the winners. But in the past two months, apart from that, he, he still hasn't really been putting it in the shifts. And I think a lot of fans have called to drop him every now and again. It, it's just one of those things. I think I know I'm laughing at what, uh, what uh, Lox is laughing at. I think I'm going to put it on screen because... Reedy finished, had to take the afternoon off work, take the morning off work <coughs> to go on a trip to watch it. And this is Reedy, who was at the match, and this is his comments. He says, You useless, spineless wankers don't want Mavadidi playing another game, useless. Listen, Reedy was at the match. That, that's his not too eloquent, it is 10, 10 past 10 take on it, Locks. Yeah. <sighs> He's obviously I frustrated. I, I don't know what to say on Mavadidi, to be honest, mate, because I think, you know, he is obviously one of them players that just pops up with a, a a clutch moment every now and then. He, You know, no one would have been surprised, mate, I don't think, if in the 90th minute Mavadidi cut inside and scored one off his right foot. I don't think well, many people would have surprised. He one in, didn't he, off his right? Yeah, 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 he did. Yeah, he's done it against Chelsea. He did it against, um, was it Norwich? He did it against. So, and he obviously got the header at the back post against Birmingham. So, I, I don't think, I think he's been a little bit harsh on Mavadidi, if I'm honest. I think he's still a big player for us. I know he's not consistent. You know, I know he's very much, uh, you know, he's not, an, he's a, he's a, a nine out of 10 every now and then rather than, you know, a seven out of 10 every game. Um, 
But I think, you know, he's important for us because he, he can come up big. Mate. I, I would much rather Mavadidi start games over all Brighton, if I'm honest, or or at gun. So, um, you know, and if you're not choosing them two, who else are you choosing? Tom Cannon on the left, Dakar on the left? I don't think so, mate. So No, it's interesting. Neil also says, Sam, about Harry Winks. He says, no one has really mentioned Winks. He is nothing like the player in the first half of the season and was badly at fault for the goal. Um, Winks obviously came off today. I, 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 there seems a lot of simple balls to Winks. Vestergaard to Winks, Winks to Vestergaard, Vestergaard to Faz. It's that sort of triangle, Sam. What? what I, I've not really noticed Winks being brilliant or too bad recently. What's? I think Winks is a, a player that thrives on getting the ball forward. He he suits the style of looking for those open gaps and finding those spaces, in which today he couldn't find those spaces because Millwall put all 11 men behind the ball. He had three men on him the whole time. The ball got past him into the park. And I, I think Winks has been a fairly decent player, you know, sometimes a little unnoticed, but that's not the end of the, the world in football. But today, I think he had three players on him the majority of the game. And when, you, you know, the main person in midfield that creates the, the chances to find the gaps has that on him, he can't do anything about it. And that, for me, is when the tactics need to change. Like I said, we're making the triangle, passing it through, you know, the, the two defenders up to Winks and building up from the halfway line. But it didn't work in the whole game. And if it didn't work in the 20th minute, we, we know as fans that in the 80th, 90th minute, we're still going to play the same way and it's still not going to work. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, Ryan says the change of formation didn't work. Um, this is what you were saying, Locks, about Ndidi playing on the left today a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Mark says here, Mabadidi frustrating his body language is so negative and sulky. Needs dropping for me. But he has scored some of those important goals, though, as well. This is the Even thing. Even if you yeah. want to drop him, the difference is there's not many players coming towards the end of the season that's good enough to replace that spot. Mabadidi's been a fairly, again, a bit like Barnes. We all kind of criticised him last season. But when it comes to the end of the season, he's probably going to be top three for goals and assists, if not top one or two. So it's hard to criticise someone who does, you know, come up in the big moments and gets the goals, gets the assists when we need it. I, I just think he's a bit Damari Gray-esque when he loses the ball, when he wants to play a certain style of football and it's not working. He he gets Mardi and he doesn't want to play. He, You know, we, we saw it against Birmingham when he played, you know, he... He gets the goal and he, you know, he does his tricks and it's like you've got the time and you've got the chances to do that. But today, he's just dead balling it, trying to outpace their defenders and he can't do it. And that's the only thing he did today and doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, Martin says here, there was no penetration. We go up, then stop to look at who we can pass to the side players and set others up and wait for us. Locks. We have had tonight, I've just checked the stats. Tonight's game, we've had 650 passes. That's 650, which is about the normal amount for us compared to Millwall, who have had 235 passes. But in those 235 passes, Millwall created four shots on target. In our 650 passes, we created three shots on target. And of course, the biggest stat is Mill will win 1-0 with 235 passes. We've just outpassed ourselves to a defeat couple of locks. Yeah, Again. mate, it was it was a it was a classic smash and grab. Um it was very similar to the whole game. Do you remember the whole game earlier in the season? Um the, the the first loss we had this season. Um it was very similar to that. That was a shot outside the box. I think that one was a deflection, obviously. This well, one was Bristol a City finish. as well the other week, really. Bristol so, City. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's, and I did see a tweet from, I want to say Rob Tanner, but it might have been someone else saying that, um, you know, just, just basically mentioning the the pattern that seems to happen in terms of conceding goals from outside the box. I think Middlesbrough, right? We we conceded one from Middlesbrough, and they won one nil. Um, there were a cut. There were two other games where we lost one nil, and they were both outside the box. So, you know, it's all you need to do, mate, is look at how quickly you you could sit there. Anyone watching this now, I would encourage you if you if you've been watching on Sky, rewind or whatever, get a stopwatch. Count how long it took from uh, for Millwall to win the ball to when the ball was in the back of the net. Count how long that was, and then find a, a moment where we win the ball and count how long it takes for us to lose it. You know, it, and it and it's probably 
triple the time. You know, we we're not quick enough on transition. I think early in the game, we we on transition we looked decent. You know, when Atkin should have played the ball into Vardy, I think it was, or Dewsbury Hall, and he and he went for the other man, and it was a bit of a bit of a poor pass. But for large parts of the game, mate, you know, it was the same as as what we've had already before before today in terms of the slow transition, no kind of urgency. And again, it just looked like we left the urgency to the 90th minute. And by that point, it's too late. We won nil down and then you get desperate. And when you get desperate in football, very rarely you come up uh, on top. So, yeah, mate, it was, um, you know, it was, I, mean, it was I think that's that's my frustration, Sam, with this is I'm just checking here is they, they scored in the 59th minute. Around the 70th minute, we made the, the changes, which were like for like. My big frustration today is it took till the 88th minute for us to make that change mm. tactically that actually from the 89th minute till the end of the game, which was only mm. eight mm. minutes, we actually probably created all those chances. Right, Locke says that's the first time I think I've seen Enzo physically change his tactics. Well, he sort and of contradicts he, himself, doesn't he? Yeah. And he, he comes out and says, this is Good. the way I want to play football. But there's nothing wrong with having a plan B, a plan C, a plan all the way to Z if stuff's not working. It, it's not hard to counter teams. Millwall had a game plan and it worked for them. It, if teams like that want to come and sit and defend against us, we should be so much quicker to get the ball in and around the box, in and around their half, rather than just sit. At, I have a big bone to pick when we're sat passing it around the back. And yet when Millwall counterattackers, even though they've got all 11 men behind the ball, we've got no one in defence. How can we be there? with four people sat behind the ball, passing it left, right, left, right. And then when we counter-attack, it's one on three most of the time. And it's just, we're lucky that it was Millwall. Or any other team that plays that way, that was better than them. But we're going to get smashed by it. I fear for Plymouth because they've got Whitaker. You know, if we do anything like that against them, he's going to bag two or three goals against us. It's just that predictable. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, could I also say Leicester struggle to defend when the opposition is on the counter-attack? I, I've got to be fair, Locks. The, the last, up until we made the change in the 88th minute, I watched from the 60th minute to the 88th minute thinking most times Millwall got the ball and went for, forward, which wasn't as much as us because they had way, way less possession and, and ball. But when they did get the ball, they were far more direct and they looked far more likely to score a second than us in that period from the 59th minute to the 88th minute. Yeah, mate. I mean, we've said it before. We'll say it again. You know, these teams, they just know how to set up against a bigger club or a better a better team. Um, they're not stupid. You know, they don't they don't come at us and kind of play the way that they would against Birmingham or Stoke or, you know, Huddersfield. They they know that the only way or the only chance they have at winning the game is to do a smash and grab on us, which they did. And a few teams have done that this year. Um, you know, these are managers that are willing and capable of changing their the way their team plays in order to get a result. You know, that's not something we can say about Enzo this season. Um, I said earlier in the year, well, a few weeks ago when we were going through our poor run, that there is no evidence to suggest that Enzo has enough about him to turn this around when we were losing game after game. Um, there was no evidence that he was willing to change the way we play in order to get results. And, you know, we saw a little bit tonight in terms of bringing Dakar on, playing with two strikers. But if you're going to leave it to the 88th minute every game to do that, you may as well not do it at all. I mean, Sam, that was that was two strikers. We've been we've been asking for it when we're losing. He, he actually did it. It nearly paid off. Yeah, all of our chances, well, majority of them came in that last seven minutes spell. And it came from having two attacking minded players up top and actually going for it if you, if you do that for the last 15 20 minutes of a game and not including extra time it, it's you just want to see, it, it shouldn't be hard for us with the team we've got you know listen we're going under ffp constrictions right now because we've overspent and a lot of those players are still here we're, we're overspending on these so-called premier league players that are struggling to beat teams like i bet mills team didn't even cost them five million pounds the one that played us tonight and yet, you know, you've got Pat Sandaka, who, you know, he doesn't score. Ian Acho, who doesn't score. I'm not blaming them because there was a lot of players today that didn't put a shift in. But I think that it has to stop with Enzo. It, it starts with Enzo, so it has to stop with him as well. For me, 
it was I, I don't blame the players for today because I think they've been told after the Birmingham game, you're playing too direct, I don't like it, I want you to play my way. And that was clear today that there was Enzo ball. And it, again, it doesn't work. And he didn't change it. He realised that he was wrong. But with nine minutes to go, it's it's pointless to put two strikes on top when you're trying to get a point away to a team that's in the bottom five. I mean, Jason says here, who were the two strikers? Well, it was Nacho and Daka. And then, you know, we got Fatou on as well. So we, we and Mabadidi, we, we did... We took wings off, so Jason, we did in the 88th minute. Enzo went for Plan B. There was Plan B, and it it, it had more chance of coming off in that last seven or eight minutes than at any other stage. Um, did he take just going back to the Birmingham game? I can't. I I didn't read his post match comments, but did he? Did he? Thanks, Sam. Sam's going off. He's had enough. Yeah, see you later, mate. Uh, see you, mate. Yeah, everybody says see you, Sam. Thanks for that. Um, did he take Doyle off at half time because Doyle was trying to be too direct and do diagonal passes and all that? That's the that's the chat because he definitely did take him off against Birmingham. Um, was he his, trying too much? I think Enzo's official uh, reason in the in the press was that um, he brought Justin on because Justin has more pace. Basically, he's quicker, um, and their winger um, I can't I can't remember his name. I don't know how to say it, but their winger was causing Doyle a little bit of problems with with the pace. So um, I joked and jested, and a couple others did, that Doyle, you know, with his diagonal balls that are brilliant, by the way, wand of a left foot, we joked that that was why Enzo brought him off. Because, mate, it did happen. Uh, Doyle did a, a diagonal ball. The one that didn't pay off, Enzo kind of, like, gave him a bit of a, an earful. Um, and that was a bit frustrating because I thought that it was actually working a little bit, being a bit more direct. But, hey-ho, there we go. But, um I like Doyle as a player, mate. But again, I think jo Justin just seems to offer a bit more energy. You know, I'm not a big fan of Justin in terms of defensively. Not a big fan at all. But you can't deny he's got a bit more pace about him. He's a bit more agile and he's got a bit more energy, um, especially later on in the game. So, um, I think we're going to end with this sort of quick bit of a debate. Lee White says there, is Enzo Claude Puel in disguise? Locks and everybody watching, I don't know if you've seen it, There's there was a very funny little meme going around, which was the Scooby-Doo mask reveal, which was the, the cartoon was literally pulling off Enzo's mask, as you'll have it, and underneath was Brendan Rogers, And then the next one is pulling Brendan Rogers off, and it's Claude Poil underneath, underneath. It does, I, I, I've said it all season, Locks, and people can check my videos back all the way back this season, and I keep asking, what really is the difference between what Brendan Rogers was trying to do and what Enzo tries to do. There's very similar traits of possession-based football, stubborn one way of playing, square pegs in round holes, no plan B. They're the, they're the four comments out about Brendan, and I, I've got those four comments about Enzo still. But I have finally seen plan B tonight. So <laughs> shut up. Of course, the, the football itself, mate, you know, when you get into the ins and outs and the, the the tiny details, I think it is different to Puel and it is different to Rogers. If you're going to brand it with the same brush of slow and intricate, then yes, it is. It is that. That is the case. Um, Not slow and overplayed. It depends on how you see it, mate. You know, it does. It, it does. Passes tonight, locks. I'm not. I'm not, mate. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not disagreeing in terms of slow and yeah, slow. I'm not. I'm not disagreeing there. I, I just think it's a different. You know, the tactics, the actual tactics themselves are different. Um, there is a difference, but I agree, it is slow. Um, it is, you know, patient football, and, and it's hard to be patient as fans watching it. Um, and and yeah, you know, I think, mate, unfortunately, it is the way that football is these days, or the way that football's going. The difference, though, is that, you know, no, no one's expecting Enzo to start a game of football going direct. Everyone expects him and I think is kind of accepts and is fine with the fact that we start a game how we do with Enzo's philosophy, if you like. But it's when things aren't going well, that is when us as fans, rightly so, demand or expect and demand a change. And tonight was, in the 88th minute, was the first sign of that. And I think we can all we can do as fans is hope that maybe Enzo took some encouragement because I do think it looked better in those nine minutes from the 88th to the to the 97th it was better 
and um, hopefully Enzo sees that and next time we're one nil down in maybe the 80th minute, he'll make that change a bit earlier. But um, yeah, Ian, but yeah. Ian I, I have to agree with you, what you say there. Um, Helena says it is slow and boring and found out. Probably a good one. And Craig says, just say it, it's boring. Craig, I think if you, again, watch my videos back, I've said all season, I, I do find it boring and frustrating how we play. It, even in the games where we end up winning, there can still be a fairly, I called it, it doesn't get me out of my seat that often type of football. I'm sorry about that, but that's, yeah, yeah, that's how yeah. I felt a lot of this season. Somebody also put a, a, a comment in there. Chris Gutteridge says, this team is nowhere near as good as the 2014 championship winning team. Ten years ago, we, we won't fulfil that same destiny, I'm afraid. Listen, Knox, we, we could probably talk for another two hours after a defeat like this. But I want everybody, if you're watching this, wherever, if you're watching on YouTube, do me a favour, please, and hit the subscribe button. And of course, if you're watching on Facebook or Twitter, give us a like and a reshare. Really appreciate that. There's a lot of people watching. We've tried to get as many comments in as possible. Lox, you're doing your show this Thursday. Just tell people when that is and when they can watch and what. Yep, this Thursday, 6.30. I've seen a few of my usual viewers uh, in the chat already, but it'll be nice to get even more um, viewers than usual, some new people that don't normally join me on a Thursday. So this Thursday at 6.30 p.m., we'll be having a meltdown, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> no, no, we'll... Um, you know, we'll we'll talk about the game a little bit and also we'll look forward to the game, which is Friday, the Plymouth game. Um, Friday evening, a, a, again, another quick turnaround. So, yeah, half six uh, on Thursday evening. Come and join us and have a chat. So please do join Locks Thursday, 6.30 for Fox's uh, fan chat. Um, focus. Fox's focus. <laughs> oh, no, sorry, Locks. It's been a long, it's been a long day. I am tired. Mm. I started work at seven. I'm not getting paid 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 grand a week, nor are you locks. So I'm not going to grumble about being tired. It's 10.30, but it is probably time to get some bed. Not the result we wanted. Thank goodness Sunderland did us a favour. And let's just hope that uh, something happens dramatic at Ipswich. Join locks this Thursday, 6.30. Locks, thanks for joining. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. Take care. Thanks so much to locks. Thanks to Sam. He's gone. He's had enough. Um, but mostly thanks for everybody watching. Uh, well done to all the Leicester fans who were at the match tonight. I'm sure it was a bit of a tough watch there. Craig says, a passing game can be good, but it's got to have a point. A lot of our passes are pointless and achieve nothing. Um, Stephen says, Phil, one thing you should always remember in football is not by playing names, but by playing active players. If Daka can't perform, well, what is Nacho doing on the bench every time in there? And Peter can have the last comment, got to win Friday. Why can't we just do it the easy way? We beat Norwich. We beat Birmingham. They were tougher in a way. Millwall, we had to beat them. Plymouth. I thought Plymouth was going to be tougher than Millwall. My goodness. Let's see what happens. Anyway, thanks to lots for joining us. Thanks as well to Sam. And thanks for all your views and comments. Hit that like. Hit that retweet. Hit that share. Hit that subscribe if you're on YouTube. I'm off to bed. I am tired. Good night. <laughs> Thanks for watching Leicester Fan TV. Thanks to our sponsors, Everards, Bolo Blinds, Pucker Pies, Pink Car Leasing, Distillers Direct, Hologram, Take Me, Newbie and Cow, The Fox's Arms and Rainbows. Run by the fans for the fans. Follow us on socials at Leicester Fan TV and visit LeicesterFanTV.com for all the latest news, views and videos.